Have you ever asked yourself whether the Earth is really round? How do you know? Maybe it's a different shape. After all, there are passages in the Bible that refer to things like the four corners of the Earth or the ends of the Earth. Well, we're joined today with someone who is involved with precisely these kinds of questions. His name is Mark Sargent and is the author of the book Flat Earth Clues. I've invited him on to share his perspective. Hi, Mark. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. So perhaps you could begin by telling us a bit about your background. Have you always believed the Earth was flat, or did you come to that later in life? Uh, much later, much later. In fact, more than than much later than most people to get into the community at all. Uh, I grew up in the Northwest in Seattle and went out to Boulder, Colorado to uh, Boulder, Colorado to play video games for a living and did that for a little while and then taught proprietary software out there for about 20 years and then and never got married or had kids so I had a lot of time on my hands and looked at just mm -hmm. about every conspiracy you can think of and I've got an opinion on just about every conspiracy you can think of <laughs> and then thought well what haven't I looked at and so in uh, 2014 I, I wasn't getting any younger so I thought I'd tick the, the flat earth off my bucket list it's like well it's dumb everybody knows this one Right. We, we have globes in our classroom when we're in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. it, it should be easy to shoot down. And nine months later, the beginning of 2015, I had one of those rare Jerry Maguire moments where I woke up and I'm like, I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. So I'm going to do the really smart thing. I'm going to put all my information online for everyone to find me. I'm going to make a series of videos, you know, one at a time and, and just start um, asking the Internet for help because the Internet hive mind misses nothing. And put them out there, and immediately people started contacting me, but not you know not academics. I thought academics would just you know somebody from some university would shoot me down, and and I could go back into my hole. <laughs> but no, the, uh, subject matter experts started calling me, and media started calling me, and just the average person on the street started calling me. It's like uh, the subject matter experts were very surprising. They said, "Yeah, it's not that crazy, man. Here's why. <laughs> I'm going to add to it." And so six months later, I didn't even have to wait for the other shoe to drop. I was absolutely all in. And that was eight years ago. And here we are, three books, uh, endorsements. Uh, I don't know how many. I just got back from the Vegas conference a couple of days ago. Uh, you know, I don't know how many meetups. It's been it's been an awesome roller coaster ride. And yeah, so yeah, the world isn't what what you think it is. You're you're living in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling. And it, we didn't even figure it out. Our best and brightest didn't figure it out till almost 1960. And when they did, they were like, yeah, we probably shouldn't tell anybody. It'd probably disrupt too many things. And so, you know, they had nothing to do with the building in this place. They just kept the secret. That's all. Well, maybe you could just go through some of the reasons why you believe the Earth is flat. Or at sure. least to believe it isn't round. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you the, the five science questions that I, I usually throw out there, which was um, science questions that I was supposed to do a debate with a, a physicist from Georgetown. And they uh, they said, come up with five science-y type things you could throw at him that, that he might be able to respond to. So uh, first one, the, the one that gets most people into flat earth is long distance photography. So eventually, you know, off in the distance, the curvature should make everything drop off, right? It's eight, eight inches per mile per mile, otherwise known as eight inches per mile squared. And that's not to scare everybody because I know everybody forgets algebra. But it, that means that eventually, the the further you go, the the worse the the angle becomes until it goes finally vertical. Because remember, it's supposed to be a ball. And people started running to the beach. I never even told people to run to the beach and started shooting long distance long distance photography. And <clears throat> HD technology really changed everything. Meaning objects like ships and lighthouses and land masses and and mountains and crap like that that were previously gone because you know just didn't have anything to zoom in good enough and record. Uh, was now back and you could you could bring back boats back into frame or lighthouses in fact the only limit that we have to in objects we can see in the distance is really the thickness of the atmosphere you know because what we're breathing in is not 100 percent transparent and it, it gets thick over time you're really in fact you're breathing in mostly nitrogen and 20 percent oxygen but don't worry about the trace gases um second one would be the um gravity versus the vacuum of space which is my personal favorite but most people don't get it because physics is not a high priority in the american education system which is a uh, pressure cannot ex exist ne next to non-pressure without a barrier which means uh i mean anything that's contained right you know whether mm -hmm. it's a spray paint can or a fire extinguisher or, or even a can of soda 
you know, you crack a, a, a can of soda, you know, it makes that noise because the pressure is equalizing. And th that is made, went to a complete extreme when it comes to vacuum chambers. You could look this up all day long, put anything in a vacuum chamber on YouTube. And if it's a soft thing, like a volleyball or football or whatever, it'll expand and expand until it explodes. And if it's hard, it'll, it'll start vibrating you know, because of the stress and eventually explode like a, like a soda can because it's metal. Mm -hmm. And that was always interesting to me because, well, um, if you put um, the, there's only one object that doesn't do that. Meaning when you put an object that you put in a vacuum chamber or a, a vacuum that it doesn't expand like, like it should. And that's the spacesuit. I always thought that was really interesting. It's like, hmm. what what magical thing in the backpack of that space who counteracts physics, you know, a, a, a thermodynamic law? And no scientist, no one, I mean, it's been eight years, no one even has proposed a, a, a workaround for it. And I'm a pretty clever, clever problem, problem solver. I can't even come up, if I was going to write this as a fiction novel, I can't even come up with a fictional way to do it. And yet... That's what we get away with. It's like, oh, well, we see him walking around on the moon. Therefore, it must work. It's like, no, no, it doesn't mean it, it must work. It, it means that you just haven't explained it. Anyway, um, third thing would be the um, eclipse shadow. Eclipse shadow is too small. So if the moon is 2,000 miles wide, the blackout zone is only 70 miles wide. That's 90-something percent decrease. When does that happen optically ever? You never walk by a wall. Shadows on the ground here only are life-size or longer. Right, the, the mm -hmm. shadows always get longer. They never get smaller. You, your shadow never turns into an action figure ever, ever, ever. And it's like, well, that doesn't prove anything. Well, it kind of does because we say the the sun, you know, the the moon is about that big, you know, 50, 70 miles wide. So it's it's awfully coincidental that that the moon shadow is what the size we thought the moon was to begin with. Um, fourth one is the moon temperature. And this was something I had no idea what was going on. Where um, you take a um, uh, point and click thermometer so uh, you can you can do this on the ground it's like a like a 20 dollar engine thermometer gun and so everybody knows in the the sunlight it's like 80 degrees in the sunlight and it's 70 degrees in the shade right it's always cooler mm -hmm. in the shade but in the moonlight it's reversed and when i was first told this i was like you know first you know i've been flat earth for like a year when i heard this i'm going no way it's true it's absolutely true so if you're in the moonlight let's say it's 50 degrees in the moonlight right it's 60 degrees in the moonshade in fact, up to 63 degrees. And not only that, but you can take a magnifying glass to moonlight and it'll get colder. As opposed to you take a magnifying glass to, to sunlight, you can burn things. And it's like, okay, does that prove the Earth is flat? No, but it completely destroys the relationship between the sun and the moon. It means the sun and the moon are completely independent objects. Not only that, but the moon is generating its own cold laser light, which is just intriguing to me. Uh, and last but not least, the fifth question was... Um, or the fifth thing was the Van Allen radiation belts uh, announced in 1959 by NASA scientist Van Allen, of course, who said that no one should ever go up there. There's really, really thick, thousands of miles wide <clears throat> belts of radiation that'll kill you dead. And yet in 1960, you know, they announced the um, the full blown moon program and they, they went back and asked him, well, how are you going to get past the Van Allen belts, which you announced? He goes, well, we're going to go really, really fast. And <clears throat> the problem about radiation is Everybody knows this. There's only three things that stop radiation, which is uh, lead, right? gold, which is twice as dense as lead, but really, really expensive, and uh, a whole bunch of water, which they use in power plants. And yet NASA can't use any of those because they're really, really heavy. So how did NASA make m multiple round trips to the moon and back? Nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody even got cancer. There's still, I think, like four of them limping around today. Everybody died of natural causes, right? And if you say, well, okay, well, maybe they're just not deadly. Okay, fine. Go to the NASA.gov website and look up something called Orion Trial by Fire, which is their Mars program, where they're saying, oh, yeah, we get, we are, we're having a hard time testing the, the new capsules because we haven't solved the radiation problem. It's like, we, well, okay, but you, you already solved the radiation problem in the 60s. You solved it perfectly. There was no concerns whatsoever. So what's the holdup now? They, they, they don't know what to do. Anyway, those five questions I threw at um, this physicist, and he just folded. That was it. And he was like, nope, 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 nope. And the, we, we never the, did the debate. Uh, and the German television team went home, home unhappy. And that's and I don't blame them. And that's because when you get your PhD in something, um, your, your wheelhouse becomes very, very small. And scientists do not like talking outside of their specialty. Mm -hmm. And so even though he might have been able to answer one of them, he wasn't going to be able to answer all five. And that's one of the keys of flat Earth. You know, we we throw out a scattergun 
uh, you know, burst of ideas. And yeah, you might be able to knock down a few, but you're not knocking them all down. And so there's a bunch that are going to get through to your head and then we just sit and wait. So, so what shape is the earth then in your view? Is it like a, a, a disc? Um, easiest way, you know, we'll, we'll use the, the lowest common denominator is probably a snow globe. Only it's not, oh, not a, okay. um, a high arcing snow globe. You know, snow globes are really, really tall. Yeah. In fact, they're almost as tall as they are wide, which is weird. But it, that's so you can put more, you know, glittery bits in there. Imagine one that's really shallow, kind of like a sports stadium. So if there was a model of like a domed sports stadium, wherever okay. you're next to, it'd be sort of like that. Because you don't need it to be very, very tall. You just need it to be wide. So it would be, um, you know, a, a shallow sports stadium. I don't know. Let's, let's just use ballpark numbers. Say 20,000 miles wide. And maybe, I don't know, 3,000 miles high, 4,000 miles high, maybe. Don't know. Don't know for sure. But whatever it is, it doesn't have to be very high because, remember, most of our population, part of the engineering of this place, which is brilliant, is that most of our population lives between sea level and one mile up. Right? Uh, commercial airlines cap out at 10 miles. Spy planes, if you believe them, cap out at about 20 miles. And a space program, whatever you're going to fake, doesn't have to do much higher than that. And uh, the North Pole's at the center. The the continents splay out around the outside. Uh, if you get, in fact, you want to look, you know, look at the diagram of all you have to do is type in UN flag into any Google engine, and click on images. It's our model is exactly the same as the UN flag for for most people. And the only continent that doesn't make sense is Antarctica. So Antarctica is in this snowy version of of um, Australia. On the bottom, it is this really, really large continent that splays out around the outside, like the 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 beach of a lake. Only it's you know covered in snow and ice, and which is also interesting. Again, if you look at the UN flag, there is one continent that is missing, and that's Antarctica. And it's like, why would you leave out an entire continent the size of Australia? Why would you do this? In fact, in fact, not only that, it, Antarctica is this big, big mystery. Yeah, you can spend fifteen thousand dollars American and, and and take a, some pictures down there with penguins, but nobody owns Antarctica. I mean, I don't know of a single inch of real estate in this world that isn't owned by somebody. And Antarctica is off limits. Not only that, but it's it's protected by the Antarctic Treaty, which isn't even up uh, for debate until twenty forty one, which says that no corporation can set up shop in Antarctica, forever. It's the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties. Is like, why? But I get it. I get it. You you don't want people just you don't well you don't want petroleum companies you know with huge pockets you know flying yeah. their their personal aircraft and helicopters out there. There's, there's too many loose ends. So when they locked it down in 1959, I totally got that. Which was and by the way, coincidentally, that was the same year they announced the the down on radiation belts. Think about that. They announced that that there's nowhere to go up above because it's super deadly and the outer markers are off limits simultaneously. As, yeah, and again, you can believe in coincidences all you want, but I've never seen a treaty that ironclad. Sorry, one more thing. Not only are you not allowed to go there, you're not allowed to talk about it. So let's say British Petroleum, for example. You know, the, the, we, you know, the Americans went down there and said, and came back in the 1950s said, oh, yeah, the place is made out of money. Just resources everywhere. And yet British Petroleum isn't allowed to even run full-page ads in their newspaper. Nobody's even allowed to protest, and nobody has. Which is exactly what you we would do with national security. You'd go to the head of the whatever corporations and you say, "Okay, if you're thinking about going down there. You call this number, and they're going to talk you out of it. And when you you know finally retire, tell whoever's going to replace you to call us because we're going to talk about it and under national security. Now forget that I was ever here. That type of thing. There you so go. If, if we if we use the analogy of the snow globe, what, yep. what is your belief about if anything uh, is there anything outside of that? Sure. Sure. It just, is it a it, mystery or? Well, I mean, of course, it's a it's a mystery. The The bigger question is, uh, one, are there more snow globes, right? You know, yeah. it, depending on who built this place, right? It's either one of two things. It's either an older technology, you know, older civilization, bigger than ourselves, or the divine. And at that point, you're kind of splitting hairs because if a golden spaceship landed in the middle of somewhere, there'd be some nerds out there looking for autographs and there'd be other people building a church for the golden yeah. spaceship. So... I'd like to think there's this isn't just a one-off, you know, only because what's inside it tends to not lean towards a one-off, meaning we're not the first people to be here. Uh, just, you know, I'm, and I'm, again, I'm not picking on scripture or anything like that. I'm just saying, you know, the sunken city is off of 
India, the Sunken Cities off of Japan, the uh, Puma Punku, Machu Picchu, Bimini Road, uh, the, the real py pyramids, the Bosnia pyramids, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, I think every civilization has their time and their wonderful hero's journey story, but I think every civilization eventually has to run its course and join whatever the graduating classes are. Uh, as the old saying goes in school, you don't have to go home, but you got to get out of here. And you just got back from a conference. Maybe you could tell us a bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So we did uh, again. That when you're when you're into this, there's the, the there's a big need to connect with other people. And even though there's a lot of people to connect through uh, our wonderful app called the Flat Earth Sun Moon and Zodiac Clock app, which is fantastic. Um, we've been doing conferences since 2017. Uh, first one was in Raleigh. Uh, second one was in Dallas. The third one was in Denver. The fourth one was supposed to be in Vegas in 2020, but then the pandemic hit. And we couldn't even get find a venue because you know, they said, well, wherever you go, you got to wear masks. It's like, yeah, you're not going to be able to ask our crowd to wear a mask. That would be horrible. And they wouldn't do it. So we did uh, 21, 2021 and 22 in South Carolina uh, with Karen B's uh, startup group. And then we just finally came back. Once the mandates were rolled back, it's like, okay, let's do it big time. And we did it in Vegas and brought in speakers from England and people flew in from different countries. And it went ran for last Saturday and Sunday. And it was an absolute blast. I lost a ton of sleep because I came in on Thursday <laughs> and left on Monday because I had to help MC. And it was great. Absolutely, you know, tons of great people, and and I think probably eighty five percent of the people, and this happens all the time, that were there were it was their first conference. Uh, I mean, yeah, of course, I recognize some of the regulars, but most of them were new, and that that's happened every year, you know, that we've uh, we've been doing this. So yeah, it's been it's been a heck of a ride so far. Well, what do you think it might take you? Um, you said you used to believe that the Earth was round. What do you think it would take you, perhaps, to convince you that the Earth? was actually round sure and by the way we don't use and i can see where your head is already because we don't use the word round oh. um we use the word ball or sphere or globe sphere. technical sorry yeah. that's what i meant no 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 no. it's okay everybody makes that mistake yeah uh you know like your dinner plate is round technically yeah. your pup cap is round and so on and so on but people ask me all the time so what would it take you to get you to quit and i go easy one's expensive and one's simple uh, the expensive one, and by that I mean relatively expensive, I mean that you have to get a hold of space agencies, slap some sort of camera on the side of somebody else's rocket, point it at the ground, and when the rocket takes off and leaves orbit, the you know the world should turn into a globe. And, you know, I'm looking at Artemis, I'm looking at SpaceX, I'm looking at all this crap. It has never happened in the history of space travel, which statistically is highly unlikely. You know, meaning no, there is no unedited footage where, uh, you know, the, the the flight takes off and then the thing finally turns into a globe. And the rockets move pretty fast. You should be able to do this. No, it's it's like, okay, it's launch, 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 edit, 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 and now we're in orbit. It's like, okay. And not that we couldn't, you know, high school kids couldn't do that with <laughs> Visual Studio nowadays. Um, but the cheap one, the, the cheap one, which I put out there for four or five years, in fact, I was talking to some guys at the conference about this, is... The spacesuit is wrong. Like I mentioned earlier, the spacesuit mm -hmm. cannot work the way it, it should work. So loan me any of the spacesuits. I mean, come on, there's, you know, the any of the models going back from the 1960s all the way until now. Loan it to me. You know, you can supervise it, of course. Put me in a vacuum chamber, crank it up, tell me what happens. Tell me how, tell me how I survive. And not only that, but, uh, you know, for $4 worth of materials, I can prove whether it's a vacuum chamber or not, which is probably why they're never going to invite me. Because otherwise, you put me in a vacuum chamber, you can pull a switch and say, well, you're in a vacuum now, right? Okay. Three things to prove it's a vacuum. Uh, one, tap water boils in a vacuum at room temperature. Two, any balloon with even a single breath of air will just expand and expand until it explodes. And three, um, you can't. there's no sound. So like a bell, you know, you've seen this in vacuum chambers. You, you could ring a bell in a vacuum chamber. It doesn't make any noise. And that's that's my challenge which is okay tell me how the spacesuit works and in fact it was one of my clues if the spacesuit is fake then it's all fake and i totally get it which is the most people don't understand physics and so uh, I'll, I'll tell you this really quick which is in the united states i get it you know patriot wave the flag go team right you know that's why we're in space but i ask people outside this country i say why do you think the americans went to space and they all say the same thing they say well you, you guys went to the moon because it was on television and the, and the media would never lie about something like that. 
I smile at him. It's like, wow, you don't know us at all because <laughs> the Americans lie about everything all the time. That's just one of the things we do. I mean, there's a reason why Russia calls us the empire of lies and we're good at it. I mean, it helps us most of the time, but there you go. So there, that's anyone wants to shoot me down and hope, well, hopefully not kill me. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's how you do it. Put me in a vacuum chamber and I'll, I'll be the martyr in that case. Of course, they'll probably just play it off as an accent. Oh, there's something wrong with the suit. Like, Whatever. Well, you, you've been fairly vocal about all, about all of this, and also the media has criticized this this movement. And sure. so I wonder why they don't just do that, uh, give you the space suit and and let you or let you have the device you want that you that you trust and strap it into, onto something you trust and then just end it all right there. Yeah, excellent point. And they can't. Uh, I, I again, I understand media. I've spent so much time with producers um, over the years. Like, here's a great example: um, the the Red Bull jump, which you might have seen some years ago, where the guy jumped quote unquote from the edge of space, and he was only like 130 thousand feet up. But the the camera, he was using a wide angle lens, you know, fisheye lens, and it showed Arizona as basically the severe curve. And I called out producers on this, and I said, "Why are you using that shot? You know." It's dishonest, right? You know the curve isn't that bad. They go, yeah, but it's a good shot, isn't it? And, and you know, it's a, it's a Mark Twain quote, which is timeless, which is never let the truth get in the way of a good story. And the, the media plays along. There's some things they can't touch. And uh, America's American journalism, you're not allowed to, to criticize NASA. NASA is a sacred cow in a, a lot of people's eyes. And I get it. I get it. So that's all right. I'm going to keep doing it. Well, well. Well, I want, to, I want to thank you so much for, for coming on and chatting. Yeah, yeah, ha happy to do it. If you need anything else or, or if anybody needs any resources, uh, just Google Flat Earth Mark. Uh, you will eventually go down the rabbit hole that leads to me. Again, his name is Mark Sargent. You can find out more by visiting his YouTube channel. I'll put a link to all of that down below. Thanks again for listening, everyone. God bless you and bye for now. Hello, Daisy. Hello, Maggie.